Hey guys, my name is Ashley and welcome back to my channel, Worth the Read, where we talk about books that are worth your time reading. Today's video is a covers and cocktails. If you are new to my channel, welcome. Covers and cocktails are videos that I make when I read adult novels and I pair them with a adult beverage, an alcoholic drink. So let's get right into it. Today's Covers and Cocktails book is The Wedding Date by Jasmine Gilliard. Now, this is an adult novel, so I'm telling you that now. It's not a young adult, this is an adult novel. So we do have some explicit scenes in this book, but it's very tastefully done. Um, I give this book a four star rating. You know what, I give it a four and a half. Four and a half stars. Only reason I do not give it five is because I wanted more. Like I wanted the book to be longer. <laughs> and Jasmine has a collection of books. The first one is The Wedding Day. The second one is The Proposal. And I've, I've purchased both. So in my mind, The Proposal was a sequel to The Wedding Day. Doing some research, I found out is not. It's a whole different story. So she doesn't have a sequel to this book. And I would really, 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 really like one if she happens to see this for any reason. I would like a sequel to The Wedding Date, the first book. Um, and yeah, pretty much. It, it's a great novel. And I'm going to get into why. Because I enjoyed this book so much. While I was physically reading it, I decided to get the Audible so I can reread the parts that I was reading. I was doing the audible in the line with reading the book because I, when I enjoy reading a book and I really enjoy chapters, I tend to read the chapters over and over and over again because it was just that type of book. So I started reading it and by the time I got to chapter five, I wanted to reread chapter five. I reread re -read chapter five maybe four times and then I was just like, let me just get the audible so I can listen to this at work. It is just that kind of book, so <laughs> let's get into the, the story. There are two main characters in this book, Alexa and Drew. Alexa is the chief of staff for the mayor of Berkeley in California, and Drew is a doctor, a children's doctor in California. They interact, they first meet in an elevator. Alexa is going to visit her sister who's in town visiting for the weekend to celebrate her sister's promotion. And Alexa gets in the elevator and the elevator breaks down. It completely stops. She looks up and she realizes she's not in the elevator alone. And Drew is in the elevator with her. Um, one, what I liked about this book is the main character, Alexa, is Afro-American. She's described as curvy, so she's plus size. She's not um, your typical size. It make it very clear that she's curvy throughout the book. And Drew is a white guy. Caucasian, however you want to say it, but uh, but he's very attractive, you know, your quote-unquote good-looking, tall, muscular gentleman. And what I liked about this book most, they get their race out of the way in the beginning, but then they don't really make it a big deal. This is not a book about an interracial couple. This is a book about a couple, period. And I'm, I enjoyed that because sometimes books that deal with interracial relationships tend to fall on that being the main topic, and this book does not. You, It pops up every once in a while, little seeds of it, but it is not the main focus of this book, and I'm greatly appreciative for the author for that. Um, they're in the elevator. They start a conversation. Drew's in town for a wedding. His actual ex-girlfriend and his med school college best friend's wedding, right? Not only is he there for the wedding, guys, he's in the wedding party. He's very uncomfortable and his date that he was planning to bring to the wedding canceled on him because of a family situation. And he's dreading going to this wedding by himself. So they're in the elevator, they're talking, they're in the elevator for about 30 to 40 minutes they're talking, they're, they're laughing. She has snacks in her purse that she was taking to her sisters. They start to snack. And by the time they get off the elevator, Drew has this bright idea that, how about I just ask Alexa to come to meet 
come with me to the wedding as my girlfriend or my date. She agrees. It's very simple. She feels like this is a once in a lifetime thing. When am I ever going to see this man again? Why not just play and have fun for the weekend? Now, the thing is, Drew makes it very clear in the beginning of their interaction that he does not do girlfriends. He makes it abundantly clear that he does not do girlfriends. So in her mind, she's just like, okay, he's, this is not going to turn to relationship. He doesn't do girlfriends, as he likes to say. So why don't I just do this and go have fun? And that's how the book starts off. Now, the book goes from them going into a date and she actually goes to the rehearsal dinner the night before the wedding and then the wedding with him. From the very first time she see, he sees her at the rehearsal dinner, he starts to realize that, oh wow, she's gorgeous. Oh wow, she's very articulate, she can move around the room, she's really impressing his friends, the, the bride, the groom. She works for the mayor's office, people, so she knows how to smooth and play a room. Um, he loves that about her. So you can see from the first date that he's catching feelings. And she's talking to herself the whole time, trying to not fall in love with this guy. Because she knew, like he said, he doesn't do girlfriends. That goes all out the window. They end up in this long distance physical relationship because they're physically very attracted to each other. They physically are very in sync, if you know what I mean. Um, and the descriptions of the love scenes are, they're not on the, the side of erotic fiction so they don't get go that far, but they're very, intense and enjoyable to read um i will say that the book goes on they date date in their mind this hookup for a while and then she's just like i can't do this anymore i can't deal with this i want more than what he's wanting to give so i need to stop and it kind of breaks his whole world down he doesn't realize that he's in love with her and like this is the one for him and being a hard-headed man he fights it and the book ends in a in a way where you know i'm not going to tell you guys but i highly suggest you read this book if you love or if you need because at this the moment that i read the book i realized i was trying to choose between two books and my whole process of choosing these books are is literally flipping a coin and whatever side it lands on is best two out of three is the book I decided to read at that moment. So I had two books. I had a children's, it's not a children's novel, but I had a young adult novel and I had this one. And I really wanted to read the young adult novel, but I was just like, I haven't read an adult book in a while. Let me just put this in the pot. And I picked it up and I did not realize how much I needed to read this book, how much I needed to read a love story. And I just devoured it. It was amazing. This is a true love story. If you are not in the mood, for a roller coaster ride of emotions with two people in a relationship, this is not the book to read. If you are wanting and needing a good romance novel, I highly suggest you pick up The Wedding Date by Jasmine Guillory. The drink that I came up with for this book is called The Dr. Moreau. The combination of two characters, Dr. Drew and Alexis, whose name, Alexa, whose name Last name is Moreau, and that's what Drew called her, Moreau. Um, this drink, which I have here, is a combination of the first kiss of Dr. Drew and Moreau, and Moreau's addiction. Now, the first time they kissed at the wedding, Alexa described Dr. Drew as tasting like chocolate and bourbon, chocolate cake and bourbon. And Alexa is addicted to coffee. It's made very clear in the book that she has a coffee addiction. So I decided to combine the two. And this is a chocolate bourbon frappuccino. Now, very simple drink to make. Very simple drink to make. Um, what you do is you brew some coffee, mix two tablespoons of instant chocolate cocoa mix, like chocolate, um, hot chocolate mix and you freeze them. Ice cube tray, 
freeze it. The reason why you want to use an ice cube tray is when you blend it, you don't have to add the extra water from ice cubes to make the frothy and the frappuccino consistency. You don't want to add the extra water. Two ounces. I use two ounces because again, you guys, you know, I'm a little heavier on the alcohol. I like to taste my drinks. Two ounces of bourbon, any bourbon whiskey you choose. I chose Maker's Mark and blend it in a blender. And there you have it, the Dr. Monroe. If you enjoy coffee, you will like this drink. I am not a heavy coffee drinker. I'm more of a coffee with my cream drinker. Yeah, th that's who I am. I love creamer. I love the taste of the creamer. So I'll have creamer and like a splash of coffee in it. But so this is a little lighter for me because I'm not a coffee drinker. But if you are a coffee drinker, I highly suggest, suggest this drink. The bourbon is not strong. So I put two ounces and I still don't taste it. So that's good. So if you want to put two ounces or an ounce, that's fine. But try it out. Let me know if you guys try it out. Comment below. Um, and this is it. The Dr. Monroe for our covers and cocktails. That is all, folks. That is our covers and cocktails for today. I give this book a four and a half stars. It is definitely worth the read. Go check it out. Her style, Jasmine's style of writing is very simple. And that's not a bad word. I don't, some people say simple writing is just, no, it's easy to read. It flows. It's entertaining. Um, you don't want to put the book down and you'll want to reread certain scenes because they were so entertaining and joyful to read. So that's what I mean by simple. It's just a good book. It's a well-written book. And I definitely plan on, I'll repurchase the, the proposal which is her second book. And she has two other books. I think it's, um, I can't remember the names of them, but she has two other books, the anniversary date or, and another one she, that are already released. And I do plan on purchasing those. I am currently reading the other book that did not win the coin toss, which is Akita Witch. I'm currently reading this. This book reminds me of Harry Potter. And we all know how much I love Harry Potter. So, Akita Wish is what I'm currently reading. I will put the recipe for the Dr. Monroe down below. Please let me know if you guys try it. Send me pictures. Tag me on Instagram. My Instagram is worth, worth underscore the read. 215, I think. I really don't know what my Instagram is. That's a shame, right? But it'll be down below. My Instagram will be down below. Um, let me know. Have you read this book? What do you think about this book? Did you need the romance? I truly have become very cynical when it comes to relationships recently. So I needed this. I needed a love story. And that's the great thing about reading books. It just feeds you in ways that you did not, don't know, and sometimes don't realize you need. That's, to me, the best part of reading books. Um, everybody have a great day. Many blessings. Happy Martin Luther King. I hope everybody gets to enjoy it. I have to go to work. We don't get the day off, but that's fine. I'll be celebrating in my own way at work. And many blessings from Philly. Peace out. Worth the read.